What makes a fantasy football league winning quarterback? Over the last few years, fantasy football has changed massively. The quarterback position is no longer about floor level replaceable scores. Now it's about high end, weak winning, smash your opponent in the mouth ceiling outcomes. In this video, we're gonna break down what it takes to crush your opponents with the quarterback position, a key stat that you should be looking out for, and which quarterbacks are currently undervalued and which ones are overvalued. There are two clear categories of quarterback nowadays. The dual threat quarterbacks who rush for five attempts per game or more and the pocket passes. 10 years ago, the dual threats were the complete exception to the norm. With only three quarterbacks rushing for five attempts per game, there was a slow and steady increase to that number. But then in 2018, something happened that just opened the floodgates. Lamar Jackson entered the league. In 2019, when Lamar Jackson won the MVP award for the first time, he averaged 11.7 rush attempts per game, 80.4 rushing yards per game, and 0.47 rushing touchdowns. Jackson rushed for 6.9 yards per carry, but he also led the league with 36 passing touchdowns. That was five more than the next nearest quarterback. Jackson did all this whilst playing the 12th most quarterback snaps across the league. He was efficient when he needed to be and dominant when he needed to be. Lamar Jackson put up the best QB fantasy season of all time. To put it in perspective, Lamar scored 421 points, which were 50 more than Josh Allen scored in 2023, despite the fact that Allen rushed for 15 touchdowns. After Jackson took the lead by storm, winning the MVP award unanimously, this changed fantasy football and the NFL in a meaningful way. We went from five quarterbacks averaging five rush attempts per game in 2019 to eight in 2020, and 10 in every season since. But it wasn't only Lamar Jackson changing the game. In 2019, Josh Allen was far from elite. Throwing for 4,228 passing yards, but only 20 touchdowns, he completed a miserable 58% of his passes that year, ranking dead last among starters. But he still finished as the QB 10 because he rushed for 510 yards and nine touchdowns. In 2020 ADP, Lamar jumped to QB 2 while Allen went from 21 in 2019 to QB 10 that year. Allen would go on to be the QB 3 that season, starting a dominant stretch of three years. The game had changed and drafters weren't willing to let these kind of players be discounted going forward. A floor had been formed, and no longer were dual threat quarterbacks going to be allowed to slip much past the 100th pick of drafts. When Anthony Richardson was drafted by the Colts, he immediately jumped into the top 100 picks and never slipped out of the ninth round all through draft season. He was fresh off 8.5 rush attempts per game in college, and that was a massive draw to fantasy managers. Since the start of the year 2000 season, there have been 113 instances of quarterback rushing for an average of five rush attempts per game. 50 of those, or 44%, had an average points per game of 18 or higher, that's the equivalent of QB 12 in 2023 QB scoring. 46.6% of quarterbacks who averaged five or more rush attempts had at least seven top 12 weekly performances per season. The best ball, that's massive and something we should care deeply about. In 2023, four of the QBs that fell in that category had at least seven top 12 weekly finishes. This is where the ceiling comes from. So where does it leave us for 2024? And where does it leave the pocket passes? We're getting to it real soon. While you're here, hit the subscribe button down below. We have a constant stream of best ball content, Dynasty, Redraft, we do it all. Underdog best ball streams on Monday, DraftKings on Tuesday and Wednesday, not to mention all the incredible Dynasty content that Rich is pumping out. Since the start of the 2018 season, there have been 48 quarterbacks who average 5.0 rush attempts per game. Of that 48, 64% finished as a top 12 quarterback in points per game, and 46% finished top 12 in total points scored across the season. So if rushing for an average of 5.0 rush attempts per game gives us a really strong chance of getting a top 12 season, which dual threats are currently undervalued? We'll get to that soon, but first we've got to talk about the pocket passes. Since the start of the 2018 season, there have been 33 quarterbacks who finished inside the top 12 quarterbacks without rushing for 5.0 rush attempts per game. That's an average of 5.5 per season. In 2023, we saw CJ Stroud, Brock Purdy, Kirk Cousins, Jordan Love, Dak Prescott, and of course, the elite Joe Flacco, all finish as top 12 options. As a group, they average 2.03 touchdowns per game and 276 passing yards. Only Dak Prescott, 
had more than four top five weekly finishes among this group. But the key for these pocket passes, it's consistency. They averaged 6.8 top 12 weekly finishes as a group. 200 passing yards and two touchdowns counts for about 16 points on most best ball formats. That's the equivalent to the QB 15 finish in 2023 scoring. So we need our pocket passes to not only clear 200 passing yards and two touchdowns, we need them to exceed it if they're going to compete with the dual threats. Since the start of 2018, only two pocket passes have managed to finish as top 12 quarterbacks when averaging less than 245 passing yards per game. Trevor Lawrence in 2022 and Ryan Tannehill in both 2019 and 2020. Tannehill got there by adding five rushing touchdowns in 2020 and four in 2019, while Lawrence added five rushing touchdowns in 2022. Aside from these two, Joe Burrow has been the only other pocket passer to hit five rushing touchdowns without having a season where he averaged five rush attempts per game. So it's not easy to project someone to make up for that lack of passing volume by suddenly getting lots of rushing touchdowns unless we've seen a long history of it. 4 for 4 consistently put out strong projections year on year, and they currently have seven quarterbacks projected for at least 245 passing yards per game and at least 1.7 touchdowns per game. 1.8 passing touchdowns is as high as any quarterback projection they currently have, and while it's not uncommon for players to exceed that, 30 touchdowns per season is also a fair top-end projection, given only four quarterbacks hit that in 2023 and only four in 2022. We've established the barrier for a top 12 finish is either five rushing attempts per game or around 245 passing yards and 1.7 touchdowns per game. But what we want is top five performances. That's what really gives us these weak winning performances so what does that look like for non-rushing quarterbacks? In 2023, Joe Flacco and Dak Prescott finished inside the top five in points per game. Both averaged over two passing touchdowns per game and over 260 passing yards. Flacco had 323 yards on average per game and 2.6 touchdowns, a considerable amount more than Dak, who had 2.0 touchdowns per game and 264 passing yards. Flacco, of course, he only played five games, so it's perfectly fair to question whether he could have sustained that for the course of a season, and the likely answer is no. The only numbers above this mark since 2018 were from Dak Prescott during his 2020 season, where he only played five games as well. Putting those two points aside, it's obvious in the modern NFL to finish inside the top five quarterbacks, we need a QB to throw for around 280 or 320 passing yards and around 2.2 passing touchdowns per game on average. Going back to 4-4's projections, we can see what a massive jump this is compared to what's fair to project. At best from this selection of non-rushing quarterbacks, is it fair to project any more than two of them to be able to jump into the top five? So which of these quarterbacks can give us a top five finish? There's a lot of strong options. In 2022 and 2023 combined, there were 44 instances of a quarterback scoring 30 or more points in a fantasy-relevant game. Of those 44 instances, 27 involved a quarterback rushing for more than five attempts in that game. If healthy, it's fair to expect the top three to all rush for more than five attempts per game and all to stay inside the top five quarterbacks. We have a big track record of them hitting that criteria. Anthony Richardson only played four games, but in those games he averaged 18.2 points and that includes the two games where he left early. In the two full games Richardson played, he scored 20.9 points and 29.6 points. In those two full games Richardson played, he had 10 rush attempts in both. A massive number. He also scored four rushing touchdowns across the four games. If Richardson plays anywhere close to that style in 2024, we can expect him to be very close or inside the top five quarterbacks. Through Kyler Murray's first four seasons, he averaged above five rush attempts per game. He also averaged 243 passing yards and 1.5 touchdowns per game. In 2023, despite returning from an ACL injury, he managed 5.6 rush attempts per game. So in 2024, a year further removed from the ACL injury, a year further used to this new offense, is it fair to expect him to get back into the top five quarterbacks? Jaden Daniels is possibly the dual threat with the biggest range of outcomes this year. We all know how much he loves taking a big hit, but he also threw for 3,811 yards and 40 passing touchdowns in his final season at LSU, while also rushing for 1,250 yards and 10 touchdowns. That was an average of 11.2 rush attempts per game. It's hard to imagine that goes below five per game in the NFL. So that's almost three locks pending health in Lamar, Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts. 
and then three really good options who could make the leap into the top five because of their dual threat ability. But what about the pocket passes? Everything we've just said is what makes it hard to project for one of them to end up in the top five. On any given week, the chances that the pocket passes outscore the quarterbacks, it's stacked against them because we know the floor the dual threats have is so good. But there are some really strong options, so let's get into them. Patrick Mahomes has finished as a top six QB in five of his six seasons, with last year's QB 14 finished by far his worst. But the Chiefs have added Xavier Worthy and Hollywood Brown, and that should go a long way to helping. We've seen enough from Mahomes to know he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the dual threats. This has helped somewhat because over the course of his career, he averages 3.8 rush attempts per game, so not quite five, but really close. Over the course of 91 career games, Mahomes has finished inside the top five each week on a 37% hit rate. Joe Burrow. It's hard to fade a guy who plays with Jamar Chase and T Higgins, but Higgins wasn't great last year and is still in a contract dispute this year. Burrow should be over his wrist injury by the time the season starts, but he'll also be playing for a new offensive coordinator in Dan Pitcher. Pitcher has been with the Bengals for eight years, so it's not a massive change, but it is worth noting. If Higgins is healthy and Burrow manages to stay on the field, given that the Bengals finished last in the AFC North this year, their schedule is set to be very easy. That could set the offense up to bounce back in a big way, but it's still hard to really just project Joe Burrow to get in the top five if dual threats stay healthy. CJ Stroud, please don't cancel me. He is being vastly overdrafted and has been all off season. After the acquisition of Stefan Diggs, Stroud's ADP jumped from 59 to 53, placing him as the QB5 ahead of Anthony Richardson. This is despite Stroud having only two top five weekly finishes in 2023, a number beaten by 11 different quarterbacks. Russell Wilson, Sam Howell, Justin Herbert were all among the quarterbacks who had more top 12 weekly finishes than CJ Stroud's seven. Stroud had the highest single weekly score of any quarterback last year when he scored 40.8 points in week nine, but he was responsible for only one more of the top 100 QB fantasy performances across the whole of the season. Stroud is an excellent quarterback with excellent weapons around him, and he can absolutely take a step forward this year, but he's going to struggle to compete with the dual threats at the top of the drafts. Currently, I view Stroud as somebody only a draft when you're taking Texan stacks. Dak Prescott, QB seven in underdog ADP currently. From week nine to 17, Dak Prescott scored 22.9 points. He was the QB2, 0.1 points per game behind QB1 Josh Allen. Since then, the Cowboys have downgraded running back to a combination of Rico Dowdle and Zeke Elliott. While the running game looks set to regress, the passing game should be at least as good as last year with CD Lamb ascending to become one of the true superstars of the league. Prescott is viewed as someone who struggles to compete with Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts. This is because of his lack of rushing upside but we saw him make up for it by being incredibly efficient last year. Prescott had six games over 24.7 points. All of them were good enough for top three weekly finishes. As long as Dak is paired with CD Lamb, we have to be open to taking the two of them. With the elite upside of some of these quarterbacks, it's hard to not want to leave every draft with at least one of them. The biggest targets for me at the top end are Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, and Jalen Hurts. Josh Allen has been excellent for the last three years running, but the cost of acquiring him as the QB1 overall, given all the changes in Buffalo, the wide receiver room that's currently there, it's just a little too steep. I tend to only draft Josh Allen when I see him fall 10 to 15 spots past ADP, which does happen in some rooms, and I much prefer that to taking him at cost. I can't get on board with CJ Stroud at price. It's far too much of a cost, unless I've managed to grab two of his wide receivers already. Otherwise, maybe if I've got one of them and then Stroud slips past ADP. But with the pocket passes, generally I want them double stacked with the idea that if they're going to hit their ceiling outcomes, they're going to be spreading the ball around and passing it a lot and scoring a lot of touchdowns. And if I've only got one Texans wide receiver and somebody else has taken the other two, my only option really is to go after someone like Dalton Schultz and hope that that's the right combination for the week I need it. From the next tier, I'll take Joe Burrow with just Jamar Chase, but I'm not taking him with just T Higgins because that still feels like a potential trade scenario. Kyler Murray and Dak Prescott, they're both easy clicks. We've seen enough from both of them to know that they can be reliable. Jaden Daniels is the biggest wild card. We've all seen the massive hits, 
but if he stays on the field, his weekly ceiling is as high as anyone. In 2022, I was at 20% exposure on Trey Lance. I am not making that mistake again by going that all in on an unknown quantity at quarterback, but I absolutely want to be around the 10% mark and having Jane Daniels in your portfolio feels like a must. Which of these quarterbacks are you fading or do you want heavy exposure to? Let me know in the comments. I want to hear it. If you want more best ball strategy, check out this video on why I'm being aggressive on the elite tight ends this year. Hit the subscribe button. We'll be back on Mondays for underdog drafts, Tuesdays and Wednesdays for DraftKings drafts, and Rich has got so much dynasty content coming your way. We will set you up to win in 2024.